Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to be checking out some products from Tesloid to determine how the Tesla camping experience is. With ICE cars, you typically don't see people camping in them because it's dangerous and inefficient to run the car overnight. With EVs that have giant batteries, it's much more feasible to run the car overnight. This allows for a built-in movie screen and sound system, air conditioning using the car's vents, and USB 12 volt power for charging other devices. So today I have three products from Tesla that I'm going to use to test out this experience. So I've got the front luggage bag set, the camping tent, which is all in this bag, and the inflatable mattress for the Model Y. So we have two front bags that are able to take advantage of the space and fit the front of the Model Y. This allows you to utilize the kind of weird shape of the front a little bit better and make it a little bit easier to transport different goods when you're camping. So these are pretty good quality with good zippers, carrying handles, and straps. It's also made of pretty nice materials, kind of like a faux leather kind of deal with some soft touch stuff on the inside. And they both pretty much just have one big pocket, but they also have these little flat pockets on the lids that you can store things in. So as you can see, it fits the front pretty well. Um, they don't hold their shape super well just because they're pretty light. Uh, but once you get stuff in them, they actually do shape up pretty nicely. So as you can see, it kind of fills up the space pretty well. And they do hold their shape a little bit better. I have just some blankets and pillows and stuff that you might bring for camping in there. So the mattress comes with the mattress itself, a pump and some other accessories for that, and a bag. And to inflate the mattress, you can use the Model Y's 12 volt socket right here in the rear hatch compartment. All right, so with it all inflated here, you can see I had to move the front seats up a little bit. Uh, obviously fold down the back seats, there's, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, six sections to inflate. Uh, these little side curtains are kind of cool because then your legs aren't just hitting against the hard plastic here. Um, I did lay in it and I'm six feet tall. I do fit. If I lay back, I got a pillow here because this back pillow rest kind of just extends over the headrest here. Um, and the pillow is kind of needed to make it so you're you're not just having your head like lay further back than your the rest of your back. And I will of course save the overall comfort view after I sleep in it. Um, but we, as you can see with the gate closed, if I just move over here so you can see, I just barely fit at six feet. My feet are touching it. I could move back further, but then my pillow hangs off the headrest here. Um, making it so I can't really do that. But with this tent product, the hatch is actually up when we're sleeping and the tent encloses the hatch. So I don't really have to worry about the leg space. My feet will just hang off a little bit. So we'll see how it goes. But from here, we have to go find a place to go tent. All right, we're here at the site. I'm gonna get all the parts laid out for the tent and then do a time-lapse to put it all together. And then I'll kind of explain it after. I think that'll be a little more efficient than trying to show you every single step. All right, so in the tent bag, they include the tent itself, which all unfolds. Uh, the main connecting rods, these are some T connectors that go on the corners. Um, we've got some stakes, the rope for the stakes, um, and then this instruction QR code where you can find other people's videos on how to build this. So the next step is just going to be to unfold the tent. Um, try to remember how this was set up because I'm sure this is going to be quite the process to get it back inside the bag like this to fold it all up. So try and keep note of how that is, but you can check out some other videos if you need help. Uh, but I'll go to time-lapse now, and then I'll see you guys when it's done. 
So I jumped there a little bit, but with the completed tent, we can go around all the sections and I can give you all the tips on how I set it up and what I realized after trying it. All right, so the first thing to get down is these cross beams. You can see them on the roof here, and it's really hard to get the tent positioned without them. So the key is these corner T pieces. You can undo this Velcro right here, and then you can put it in there, and then this goes inside of a hole right here and gives it nice and locked position. Because overall, the hardest part of setting this up was just getting it into the tent shape in the first place. So what I ended up doing is kind of finding where the top was and flipping it on its side so I could get in here and put these in. Then you can see this center piece is where you cross the two roof beams, and that allows it to kind of hold some shape. As soon as you get one of them in, it makes it a lot easier to set the rest of it up and then you can get the other one in and of course if needed you can disconnect these poles anywhere to get any flexibility that you need but you're gonna have to go inside the tent and get the roof up and that allows you to kind of flip the tent on its head and it should stand up pretty well after that and then you just want to want to pull on all of the edges all of the elastic edges that were forming the original shape when it was in the packaging once you unfold those it should just kind of go into a square and then once it's in a square, you can stake it down. And these are just normal tent uh, stakes. You, I think you can see it in the time lapse, but just a bunch of tent, st tent stakes you can have on each corner. And there's also some more for sealing it over there, which I'll show you in a second. But before you get it staked up, you're gonna wanna make sure it's positioned correctly because you wanna get a good seal with the tailgate. So you're gonna wanna kinda open the tailgate. I actually opened it like halfway at first just to get it over it. And then once you get it over it, kinda line it up here just so it's you know, elastically holding itself, and then you can stake the tent down. And those steps should pretty much get you a completed tent. Now the question is just connecting it to the Model Y itself to get that seal. So one of the first parts here that's a little easier, um, they have all these little uh, stretchy straps that you can wrap around things. So use this one to wrap around one of the spokes here. And then there's actually another stake in the ground right here to kind of keep that down right there. And then the next thing here is the roof part. You should have been able to drag this over the tailgate originally, but then these can go around the mirror uh, arms right here and just tighten it down so it kind of holds it nicely. So the next gap is kind of by the C-pillar and the rear window here. Um, they actually have a couple straps. This one I think is just extra security if it's really windy. It can go all the way up to the mirror as well, but it's basically calm here, so I don't really need this. Um, there's this middle one here. This one, I wasn't exactly sure, but I think this is a decent way to do it actually rolled down this window and then went inside the window around the b-pillar um, and then back out here and i tightened it just enough where it wasn't tugging too hard to try and seal this gap up but the key thing that they include that's attempting to fill this gap is these magnets there's four of them so two for each side and again i just kind of open this window reach my hand in there and connect the magnets right there and this tries to close this gap we'll go over that in a second when i go in there but that's kind of what you did to attempt to seal it you can see where the magnets attached and that hole would be much bigger without the magnet um, but you might want to bring some like double-sided tape or something if you can find one that doesn't really damage the paint uh, something to kind of stick it all the way along the gap and then the other hole i guess is right here on the back corner so that light you see coming in is not a gap that's just kind of the floor and it is pretty taut down there so mosquitoes again could get in but not nothing too bad um, there's not much you could do about this one. You could maybe lay some rocks on it, but I think it should be okay. We'll see how it does with the climate control though. And again, if it's really windy, they do include those ropes and more stakes. You can go off the corners here to really secure the tent down. But in my case, I don't really need to do that, but they are there. And then these are also for the roof. 
and that's what this piece was. It was actually just a roof piece. If it's really uh, rainy or windy, they have these carabiners on there. It can just strap all the way around the tent onto those corners and give you some extra seal. And there's the little front porch thing, which I was a little confused. I kind of thought these were main uh, spikes for the tent, but they're not. This is for the little porch area. I'll set that up right now, but this is kind of another optional thing that's not required to set up the tent. And that mat right there is just the trunk liner. I took that out because I'm gonna put the mattress in, but obviously that doesn't come with it. And now it's time to set up the bed again. Obviously I don't have to film that because we already looked at it, but I got all my sheets and stuff in the Tesla bags up front. All right, so it's nighttime now. I got the tent all sealed up. Got my mattress inflated, all my blankets laid out. Uh, so now I'm gonna show you guys some of the camp mode features um, and how the video works on there. So I got camp mode enabled here. Um, I was trying to show the uh, timeout display. I'll show that in the morning. It's kind of hard to see at night but the screen does time out if you're trying to sleep and it'll kind of go black and go really dim and just says it's in camp mode. But the air feels really nice. It's coming out of both vents. You got a vent right here, which is gonna keep your head at whatever temperature you want. And it's staying on, I've got it set to 65. Um, I was at 70% when I arrived, so we'll see how much it uses overnight. It's not gonna get super cold. I think it might only get down to maybe 50 degrees overnight. Um, it is in the summer, of course, so we'll see how much energy that uses. Um, but you'll probably use more if it's like a winter camping or something like that. And you can of course control the lights. So we've got all the different dome lights on in the car. And there's also this light on the trunk lid. It's very bright. Um, it's illuminating the whole bed here um, and sort of a lot of the tent. The only downside is there's no actual way to turn it off. They might be able to add something like that in software, but you can't just click it just like the dome lights. So I'm just gonna try and cover it up with some tape, um, which I've seen works pretty well, but it's a pretty bright light, so you definitely need to figure out a way to turn that off. All right, so we've got YouTube loaded up here. This is just one of my videos, but you can of course use Tesla Theater at night. I'm gonna watch a couple videos and see how it is, um, but this is just YouTube in the screen. It dims all the lights when you do this, of course, except for that trunk light, so I gotta cover that up. Um, but overall, you can kind of lay down in the bed um, and just kind of put your hands on the pillow and watch this. One other tip that you can use is you can go into the sound settings here and you can move the balance to the rear. I noticed that when it was in the middle it kind of sounded like it was in the front when you're laying in the bed. This really fixes that and makes the sound a little bit better for you. Losing a lot of hope there because no one had really announced that. Alright and another thing you can do is you can actually use the USB-C ports right here to charge your phone or anything else you need to charge. And I did get a piece of tape for this, so I'll cover that guy up. It works pretty well. Um, I think it's it's a little warm, but it's not like incandescent warm, so it may be an LED, I'm not sure. And one thing that you can do is you can seal this back part, then the hatch just kind of sticks out right there, but if you really want to be sealed in the car, you can seal this thing, um, obviously after you get in there. As I showed, my feet stick out a little bit, so We'll see if I'll do this or not, but it's not a big deal because you can shut all these, of course, so, you know, you're perfectly fine. But if you really feel more secure, you can shut that. Obviously, the bugs aren't coming from this side. They're coming for the gaps that are behind that wall, so that won't really fix that problem, but it'll at least help the climate control be a little more efficient. You can see the screen is dim here. Almost nothing. That little light is the moon. It's much brighter in person. Um, the camera's not doing a great job. Of picking it up. I actually did take the top thing off the roof. We'll see that in the morning. Um, but I can't really see stars super well because it's actually tinted too much, this roof, obviously for daytime. But if there were brighter ones such as the moon, I can definitely see that. All right, so I'm going to go to bed here now. Um, it's looking pretty good right now. I'll report back how it is in the morning. Um, but looks good so far. So it's morning time now, and I'm going to do the final thoughts and kind of overall review uh, underneath the awning here. As you can see, I'm six feet tall with shoes on, and this is, you know, lower than I am. So it's not the tallest thing. It's really meant for 
sitting in chairs like this, but I guess that's fine for an awning. All right, so the night went pretty well. I got a pretty good night's sleep. Um, it was just a little bit hard falling asleep with the road right there, a couple of cars going by, it's pretty loud, but we'll get into that in a second. So in terms of the sleeping, I learned that there are two main ways to sleep in this kind of a tent. So you can sleep with the hatch open, uh, with the zipper door shut behind you and your head by the front seats. Uh, this gives a better view of the roof. It's more immersive in terms of sound because uh, you're hearing the outside world and it gives you more legroom. However, shutting the hatch and having your head by it is more comfortable because it provides a sort of zero G bed because uh, it's angled back towards the hatch. Um, it's more shaded and it's more private. I also think that some sort of shade or curtain could be used on the inside uh, where the trunk kind of starts uh, if you wanted to wake up later than the sunrise uh, without covering all the windows. And another interesting tip for sleeping in this is I showed you guys all the straps that you can attach to the front uh, to kind of seal the top there. But with the hatch open, there's so much pressure on the actual tent that it's pretty much sealed as long as you have the stake near the tire and the one on the tire. But the one that's attached to the mirror and the one that's attached to the B-pillar are kind of annoying because you can't open the doors or the windows super easily. So it doesn't really necessary if it's not super windy because that's basically what's doing. It's preventing it from blowing around. Um, the seal is pretty good without it and I wanted to try to see the stars. I, I tried to show that, but it was pretty dark. Uh, so I did remove the top part overnight and that worked fine. So throughout the night, bugs were basically a non-issue. Um, there were a solid amount of bugs outside when I went in, but I guess the seal was good enough where I didn't get any bugs in the cabin all night. So moving on to the temperature, uh, it was nice all night, uh, even with the hatch open, uh, which is how I slept the majority of the night. So the car was at 70% state of charge when I arrived at 8 p.m. That's like when I actually turned on camp mode, uh, and I set it to 65 degrees at that point, and it was 70 degrees when I did that. And then at about 11 p.m. when I went to bed, I set it to 69 degrees and the temperature was dropping down to about 48 and this morning it's about 50 degrees. It steadily went down, it's probably around 60 when I made that change. And at 6 p.m. this morning, uh, it was down to 57%, so it lost 13% and that was about 10 hours. Um, and then at about 8 a.m. right now, um, it's down to about 55%, so that's about 15% overall usage, which is about what I expected. So that's pretty good. And I'm sure in a colder camping environment, uh, this would be more consumption, possibly even double. Uh, but if you're within about 50 miles of a charger, you should be okay, because camp mode will actually automatically turn off when the battery reaches 20%, so you can make it to a charger. So now for the overall experience, and some of this is gonna be you know, on the mattress or the tent or just the Tesla in general. So in terms of pros, uh, it's a really large space in here. Um, I'll try and show that off again with the B-roll. Um, but it's really nice, you know, tall people can stand up inside this tent. So I also liked how the bed had a lot of options, uh, and they're all pretty comfortable, uh, especially for one person. I like how this whole thing folds down into a pretty small package, and with the front and the Model Y, you can store some of that up there too. And I do like the overall... Oh, shoot. Let go. And I also really like all those options to hold the tent down with the wind. Uh, I didn't really have any problems with the wind, of course, but I know how annoying that could be. And there's so many options with this, with all those strings and stakes and straps. I think it would be really easy to hold this down. So now into some cons of the whole experience. So people over about six foot two are only really going to be comfortable in the bed with the hatch open. So that kind of eliminates that closed hatch option. And two adult people wouldn't be super comfortable in here with the way that the mattress uh, takes its shape. It kind of converges inward and with one person there's enough force to kind of keep you on whatever side you want but with two you're probably just going to roll together and that would get pretty annoying. So another con that we've talked about several times are the gaps. Again I didn't really run into issues with this. Um, rain shouldn't be a problem with these but again it's the bugs. Uh, not really sure. It was fine for me but that's something uh, that could be a con for you. And just the initial uh, setup. After you get the tent unfolded, it's fine. It's just trying to get it unfolded in the first place. It took a minute, you probably saw that in the time lapse. So I'm gonna take the tent down after this. I just wanted to film this part before I took it down, so I'll leave some impressions about the takedown process. If that's really hard, I'll be sure to note it. Um, if it's pretty simple, I might not say anything, but I'll do that after, but now I'll just give kind of the overall recommendation.
All right, so some notes on the deconstruction. Generally, it was super easy. You saw all the first part, just undo what you did. Uh, just close the hatch. That made it really easy to pull it out, uh, pull the stakes out. The hard part is, of course, folding it up. So there's a lot of good videos on the QR code for this too, but I'll try to explain what I did. You can kind of look in the time lapse to see those parts. So what you kind of have to do is you have to stand it up and you want to kind of fold the walls into each other. You want to kind of fold into an L shape from a square. And you can kind of do this by just pressing it sort of into the floor while it's standing up uh, and see if you can get it to fold. And it kind of took me a couple tries, but you just have to get it where the corners touch and then the whole thing folds onto flat. And once it becomes pretty much flat, it might not be perfectly aligned, that's fine. Then you're gonna to wanna to fold diagonally and then wrap the circles around. And this kind of feels like you're breaking it when you do it, um, but you just kind of have to take a couple tries. You kind of have to just do one side. I thought you had to do both sides, but if you kind of just fold one onto the other side, it pretty much worked for me. Um, just kind of coil it around and really take note when you first take it out of the box, kind of how that coils, and that should give you an idea, so. And I had to fit it in the bag. Saw me probably struggling for a little bit there, just really tight. Um, did see some quality issues here. This strap, the stitching is ripping apart. The strap's still attached but the stitching of the actual casing uh, started to rip there. I didn't see many of that issues on the actual tent, but did see it on this bag here. Not a huge deal, but kind of annoying. So before I say this, I will say I was sent these products from Tesloid. Uh, I wasn't paid anything to do it. I have no bias in the review. They didn't give me any opinions. I didn't really read anything, honestly. I just received the products and reviewed them. So this is all my honest opinion, but just saying they did send these products for free. So overall, I, I like the setup for the most part. Uh, obviously, once you do it for the first time, you'll get used to that initial unfolding process. But overall, once it was up, it's super easy to set up because you just line it up with the car and that kind of gives you a basis of how to set it up. So overall, it was pretty easy. So Tesla camp mode works great, uh, keeping the climate control really nice in the cabin with the hatch open or closed. Obviously, I wasn't in super extreme conditions, but it worked really well. And Tesla Theater is great for watching movies and videos. Uh, I just watched a couple. I didn't really have time to watch a whole movie. Um, it's a little annoying to have to reach up and touch the screen to adjust things. But if you're watching a movie, that's not really a problem. But overall, it was great. Once I moved the sound back to the rear, that's just, it's super cozy in there. And the overall consumption wasn't that bad for a couple of day trip where charging is not super far. If you're on like a week long trip, you're definitely going to need a charger like either at the site or somewhere close. But overall, consumption is great. So overall, I was pretty excited to try Tesla camping um, and my overall experience is good. Uh, obviously, I wasn't on like a multi day trip and I'm not, you know, fully actually camping. Um, but this is great. I mean, you can put a table right there. You got plenty of room, you got a chair. Um, it all worked really well. Tesla's just in electric cars in general are really good for this kind of thing. Even without this tent, you could really sleep in there, but this is a really nice addition if you're actually camping and you want a bug free area to have food and stuff like that. So of course I will leave links in the description, go buy it. Uh, they're not affiliate links or anything. They're just links to the products I have here. Um, they are actually all discounted right now. I wasn't really involved with that, but I did notice that they're all kind of discounted. The trunk bags, and the tent. I'm not sure about the mattress, but those two things are discounted right now. So go check them out if you'd like. So that's gonna wrap up this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.